artificial intelligence from a global perspective. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Kay Firth Butterfield, head of AI and machine learning and member of the executive committee at the World Economic Forum. Welcome, Kay. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Give us a brief summary of your professional resume, if you will. Yes, certainly. I am by background a barrister. That's the uh, lawyer in the UK that wears the wigs and gowns and tries cases. And I then became a judge in the UK before moving to the United States in 2008 to become a professor and um, finding my way into being the first chief AI ethics officer of an AI company in 2014. And from there, of course, um, I moved to AI Global, which I co-founded with some very um, important people in the uh, AI space and in Austin ecosystem, and um, then moved to the forum in 2017. You encounter many, many opinions and visions people from across the globe have regarding artificial intelligence. What is the range of opinion? Do people embrace it or are they worried about it? Well, there's a huge range, of course, because globally, different people meet artificial intelligence in different ways. And so some people worry about uh, it being used for surveillance, for example. Um, and you will have noticed that in Europe, the uh, high level panel on AI highlighted two really high risk cases, one of which was AI used in surveillance and one and the other was AI used in human resources. And so what we were finding and in fact talked about at Davos was um, tech clash. Uh, for example, in the UK, uh, a recent poll suggested that most people were worried about the use of artificial intelligence. And one of our concerns, especially those of us who feel that AI can be used to mitigate many of the world's ills um, about those sort of findings is really, well, how do we how do we deal with those, those worries? Um, and how do we make sure that we have a conversation with the public? And how do we ensure that the principles, you know, over 90 organizations um, in the last year or two came up with ethical principles for AI, but how do we really drill down and bring those principles into practice? Given the COVID-19 pandemic, how is AI surveillance being balanced with GDPR mandated privacy? Well, certainly there is. Um, the German government has definitely has been talking to the um, data uh, privacy people about um, their contact tracing app, and it has in fact received a bill of good health from the uh, GDPR. Um, uh, regulator. Um, other countries obviously don't have GDPR and so other countries are doing tracing in different ways. A lot of the tracing are, are not necessarily using AI. I mean often it's, it's um, going on in the back, back room um, but a lot of it's tracing with Bluetooth for example. What about in the US? What are the concerns you hear from American leaders? Well, I think it depends upon the, upon the U.S. in terms of which leaders. So if, you, if you're talking to civil society leaders, a number of people are worried about the use of facial recognition, for example, or the use of AI in places where there would be um, bias outcomes, and that brings us back to human resources. You know, if you might not get a job because the computer was trained, the algorithm was trained incorrectly, then that is a huge problem for you. And so really what we've been doing is working with multi-stakeholders, so businesses, governments, uh, 
civil society and academias to really academia to really drill into how do we create policy that helps us to move the benefits of AI forward. What steps do we need to take uh, to address these kind of concerns? Are, are, they, are they steps that we can take globally or is this a nation by nation approach? Well, we think at the forum that it can definitely be done globally, but the way that we've been actually approaching this is to um, work with particular governments. So on facial recognition, we've been working with the government of France. Um, on procurement of artificial intelligence by government, we've been working with the United Kingdom. But the idea is always that we scale anything that we do. So we aren't, we aren't consultants to particular countries. Um, we co-create projects and then we scale them. So for example, with the UK um, work on procurement of artificial intelligence, that's scalable to every country in the world. Obviously, every country might want to make some tweaks, but it's now ready to go out into, out into the wide world. Um, to be to be used um, by country. What news or maybe information sources should people watch to find out how this issue is continuing to evolve? Well, I obviously serious news media um, is very important, um, and and also some of the technical magazines I think is very very important. One of the big problems for artificial intelligence is that so many um, artificial intelligence new articles are accompanied by pictures of the Terminator. And one of the things that would make my life a whole lot happier would be if we can move from that dystopian image of what AI is or will become to look at the myriad of ways that AI can help us solve the problems and create the world that we want to create post-COVID. I mean, what we know is that we were not ready for this pandemic. And there are ways that we could be using AI, for example, in education. So what we need to do is to make sure that we get the governance right so that we protect our children when they're using AI in education, but it's there for their future and as, and as um, connections become better around the world that we can educate everybody using AI and really increase their ability to be part of the global economy. Kay Firth Butterfield, Head of AI and Machine Learning and member of the Executive Committee at the World Economic Forum. If somebody wants to connect with UK or maybe they want to find out more about the work that you do, how can they do that? Certainly, it's really easy. Our email is ai at weforum dot org. So ai at weforum dot org. Sounds good. Thanks again. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here, or go to tonyahall.net. Thanks for watching.